Well, hey there, and welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life. My name is Natalie, and this is my blog and YouTube channel, and I am so glad you're here. I recently took a few weeks off to spend some much needed quality time uninterrupted with my people and my plants, and it was wonderful. And while the algorithm gods frown upon taking breaks, I appreciate those of you who understand how precious these early days are with our sweet girl and how sometimes you have to take a break and up pot yourself and make room for new growth in your life, like new creative endeavors, which I'll share more about with you at the end of this video. The little break gave us a chance to consider some really important questions for us, like what is sustainable for us going forward with little ones? And what do we enjoy? What are we dreaming for? And what rhythms do we need as a family? If I'm honest, I often feel like there is a little Ross Geller in my brain yelling as I navigate content creation through different seasons of life, but I've learned to befriend him. It's okay. Pivoting is good. Adapting is good. Growing is good. And while some of our questions remain unanswered, one thing is for sure is that all of this started with a love of a real good food. And so on my break, I gave myself permission to play, permission to play with my people, but also permission to play in the kitchen. And it was a really sweet time because as I did, new, very needed rhythms started to take shape routines that support our health and our hearts with real nourishing food. Rhythms that bring us together and allow us to enjoy a slower and simpler life together as a family. So this week, I invite you to join me in the kitchen for some slow living and simple cooking, and I'll share with you some of the simple staples and rhythms that help us live a good life, one with real, good, nourishing food. Well, hey there, and a welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to Mondays, or sometimes on Sundays, I'll brew a big batch of meat broth to hold us over for the week, which we'll drink as broth in a cup, or we'll add to rice or soups or chilies, things like that. It is such a great thing to have on hand and I will have a full video and blog post on this recipe later on in the week. So stay tuned. If you're new to making meat broth, it is a wonderful thing to always have on hand and it is something that we always have now every week. It's fantastic. Speaking of always having broth on hand, it is another great way to clean out your fridge. And what I mean by that is if you're like me and you don't want to go back to the market and you've got some random vegetables left in your drawers in that fridge, go ahead and pull those things out and simmer them in broth. You can make just about any kind of soup using root vegetables or leftover veggies that didn't make it into your recipes that week. And what's great is you can just simmer them slowly and they will turn into a delicious soup in that broth. And you can also add protein from what's left over of the chicken. And you can get some great protein in your diet that way too. And it's just a really simple way to make a delicious soup at any point that you need it in the week. And I've been experimenting with this really umami seasoning that is made out of organ meats. Uh, this really isn't like a recipe that I've finalized just yet, but I'm happy to share it with you guys on the blog if that's something that you're interested in. Just let me know. Uh, but as you can see, it's really simple and really delicious. 
On Wednesdays, we bake bread to the tune of French music. You're welcome. (laughs) Genuinely though, I was listening to French cafe music, which is one of my favorite jams for baking and obviously can't include it for copyright reasons, but here's this one. Enjoy. All jokes aside, this bread is phenomenal. It is a sandwich bread and I'm going to have a video and blog post on this very soon for you guys. It is so good. I now make it every week. Tommy's absolutely in love with it. I am too, because it can be used in so many different ways. You can use it for sandwiches, for toast. As it gets a little drier, you can use it for things like French toast or croutons. And it's just a really simple recipe to have in your homemaking arsenal so that you have bread. Bread is so expensive when you buy it from the store, so why not make it at home when you've got a really simple recipe to rely on? And honestly, I think I just waited so long because I didn't have a recipe that I really liked, and then I was kind of caught up in this idea of like, well, it's sourdough or nothing, and when we get kind of caught up in that black or white thinking, it can prevent us from doing good things. And baking bread for my family once a week, twice a week, is a very good thing for us and our health, as well as our budgets. Also, this is obviously a very crucial part of the recipe here. You must rock a baby as you wait for the second rise. (laughs) All jokes aside though, this is one of our favorite recipes and I'm so glad to have it. Behold, the glory of sandwich bread. We absolutely love this bread and it's a great accompaniment for breakfast and eggs with ketchup. Don't judge us. Great for sandwiches and when it gets a little stale, it's great for things like croutons and French toast. I don't know about you, but I am a clean as I go person when I can because it makes the process of cooking just that much more enjoyable. Cooking in a clean kitchen just feels different. It feels good. And so I like to, when I can, clean the kitchen in between different meals. And by the end of the week, it was nice to have a really clean kitchen because by Friday, Tommy and I were on the same page. We wanted steak. And it makes the process of cooking together just that much more enjoyable when you're working in a nice clean kitchen. All right, by the time Friday night dinner rolled around, we were ready to eat. We were ready to chow down and we had steak and Caesar salad and they were delicious and I did a horrible job of capturing the process. (laughs) But I wanted to show you that if nothing else here, you can use that bread that's a couple days old to make some delicious hand-tossed croutons and they make a great addition to really any salad, but I really wanted Caesar salad.
and I also for the first time made my own Caesar dressing and that is such a game changer to make Caesar dressing from scratch. It is, it's just, you, you can't buy it. You can't buy it. It's, it tastes so much better homemade. Now, if you know anything about mortars and pestles, you know that this is a very small mortar and pestle that is typically used for crushing up herbs, but it's the only one that I currently own at the moment. And so I used it nonetheless and still managed to make a delicious Caesar dressing from scratch. It was, it was so good. So I promised you that by the end of this video, I'd share with you some of my other creative endeavors, one of which is digital art. Now, I'm by no means an expert at digital art, but I've been having a lot of fun creating digital art pieces to turn into things like t-shirts and stickers, and we'll see where else it leads, but I thought I'd share with you some of my designs up to this point. Thank you for joining me today, you guys. It feels so good to be back. I hope you guys have a phenomenal week and come back later this week to learn about how to make your own meat broth and I'll see you there. <laughs>